through the, of the special si or, bah, bah, special joint city council and planning commission work session of September 20th, 2017, special city council work session of September 26, 2017, and the regular city council meeting of September 26, 2017. So, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval is passed. Um, at this time, I have the privilege of, I'm gonna walk up to the mic over there, have a proclamation of the city of Richfield for the Richfield Historical Society. This is a proclamation of the city of Richfield. Whereas the Richfield Historical Society's museum, the Bartholomew House, was built in 1852 and is the oldest house in Richfield. And whereas the Richfield Historical Society was created on October 3, 1967 by enthusiastic Richfield residents whose goal was to preserve Richfield memories. And whereas 50 years later, the Richfield Historical Society has kept their goal and expanded it by striving to acquire, document, and preserve the unique story of Richfield, in addition to striving to inspire a sense of place and history throughout the details of our past. And whereas the Richfield Historical Society has accomplished these goals through building a history center on the Bartholomew House property in 2005, which is open to the public and holds all of their collections and artifacts, and by visiting local schools and public spaces to share Richfield's story with people of all ages. Now, therefore, I, Pat Elliott, Mayor of the City of Richfield, do hereby proclaim the month of October as Richfield Historical Society Month in the City of Richfield, proclaim this 10th day of October, 2017. I, I, is anybody here from the Historical Society? I will see to it that the proclamation gets delivered and will get posted in the museum. Thank you all. Next item uh, on the agenda is council discussion, in particular hats off to hometown hits. This evening we'll start with council member Troutman. Thank you, Mayor Elliott. Um, I wanna start um, our, our hats off to, to Richfield on a, on a very sober note um, and just, um, in, in just uh, remind everybody of the passing of one of our, our business owners, long-term business owner, Michelle Lee of uh, Richfield Nails, um, who, who was a tremendous asset to our community. Um, her, her business, her, her nail salons, place where my mother um, would, would get her nails done and my wife would get her nails done. We, uh, we appreciate her, we miss her, her presence is, is missed and we feel that absence. Um, but just for folks in the community to know, Richfield Nails and Salon, I'm sure she would want everybody to know, is still open for business. They're still receiving clients and that community um, is hurting and would love your support. And if you haven't gotten your nails done yet, I just wanna encourage everybody, they're right over on Penn. They're great, they're wonderful. Uh, and they'd love, they'd love to see you there. Um, also on a lighter note, um, would uh, just wanna remind everybody that this Thursday in two days, uh, the Richfield Foundation is gonna have a wine tasting event. And so there will literally be hundreds of wines of which you must know your limits. Uh, our Ch Chief Henthorne and his team will have trouble. <laughs> but amazing opportunity, great wines, not pretentious, and everything you spend there goes to support great things that are happening in Richfield. So please come out um, uh, and uh, support the Richfield Foundation at the wine, wine tasting event. Thank you, Council Member. Okay, I wanted to, to mention a couple of things. Um, County Commissioner Debbie Gotell is having an open house, and that will be Thursday, October the 19th, from 4.30 to 6 o'clock p.m. It is an open house, so she will have some appetizers, refreshments. You'll get to see her, her new office, and also she's, um, uh, she's gonna have some local artists um, that, that a lot of us are familiar with and it's a renovated office. We'll have an opportunity to visit one-on-one -on -one with her. The public is invited to attend, so please join us. Um, second, um, I wanted to, um, to let folks know that, um, and this is something for Council Member Howard, who's got one of our, our favorite uh, constituents living with him, uh, named Calvin. Um, the Richfield Community Center does have 
a box that's designated for mail that's going to be going to the North Pole to Santa Claus. And that is designated for kids from ages three to seven. So if you wanna do a Dear Santa letter, you can drop it off at the community center. And I know that the, the council member Howard, it'll save you some postage. Very so, good. Okay, and then <laughs> um, the other thing is um, uh, honoring Veterans Memorial uh, is a very important part of this community. We have a Veterans Memorial uh, at Vets Park, and uh, I tell you, it's talked about statewide, and all our federal officials know about it, all our military folks know about it. We have two service clubs, American Legion and the VFW, and we're all very, very proud of, of uh, the Veterans Memorial. Well, there will be a pancake breakfast, um, or French toast if you prefer, and that will be Sunday, October the 15th at 9.30 till one o'clock p.m. at St. Richard's Catholic Church. So please join us for that. Uh, um, okay, and next I have, you know, the Richfield Sun Current put together this little um, magazine type issue, which we really appreciate it. It's got information about the cities, the schools, the Chamber of Commerce, Historical Society, uh, our Hennepin County Library, um, churches, you name it. And I think one, one of the things I really liked about it is that Mayor Elliott delivered um, a message of welcome. And he put it, you know, he said, we're urban by definition, but neighborly by nature. Mm -hmm. And that really captures the essence of what Richfield is. We're neighborly by nature, and uh, and it's a it's a very welcoming, um, um, you know, um, greeting to to new residents. And I hope that um, that hopefully the uh, real estate folks uh, will pick up on this and maybe make it available to prospective uh, Richfield homeowners. And let me see. Uh, the other thing is, um, uh, I want to remind folks about voting. Uh, we have a school board election coming up, and we have two questions on uh, school referendum. I noted in the Richfield Sun Current, there were two letters to the editor. And, and I really appreciated them because the referendums speak to the fact of the, of the value and how we hold values in our community. And one of, and one of them is we really value our homes, and we, we wanna maintain and increase the value of our homes, and we will do that by supporting our, our Richfield schools and our Richfield school system. The other thing is too, we value our students, and these students, we want them well prepared so that they're educated when they get out in the workforce, because they will contribute to our society, and they work, will contribute to our economic well-being as, especially those of us that are getting a little older. So um, please, uh, w uh, the city council has unanimously supported uh, the school referendum and we uh, would like to encourage you to also join us in doing so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I don't have too, too much to add other than second meeting in all a pumpkin related item. I <laughs> uh, wanna alert folks to the great pumpkin giveaway on October 14th, uh, and that's at Fairwood Park from 10 a.m. to noon, and there's one pumpkin uh, per family and some fun and some face painting, and uh, that's the 13th annual Great Pumpkin Giveaway. Uh, and there's also fun happening at Veterans Park on the weekend as well, uh, some bouncy castles and, and pumpkins as well. Uh, and it's, it might be an unpopular opinion, but I also want to share that I really like all the pumpkin-flavored stuff this time of year. <laughs> I'm on board. The two items that I would like to share today have already been brought up by Council Member Garcia, but I want to elaborate them on them a little bit. So the first one was that voting is four weeks away on November 7th. So just as a reminder, on election day, the polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And if you're not able to make it on the 7th, remember that you can come here to City Hall and vote um, using absentee voting. So the hours will be 8 a.m. to 4.30, Monday through Friday, and it will be closed on Saturday and Sunday. 
You can also request an application um, by calling 612-861-0580. Or if you want more information, you'll, you can look on our city website or you can visit mnvotes.org and get an application online. Then in terms of the referendum and the um, school, the two school questions that will be on there, I want to make sure um, they are all familiar to you. So if you do get the Sun Current, make sure that you um, look through it for the school board candidates as well as more information on the referendum items. So the first question is focused on increasing the current operating levy to manage appropriate class sizes and provide staff support and learning materials um, to new and existing programs. The second question on the ballot is regarding a capital bond referendum to allow the schools to use, to effectively maintain their buildings and improve safety, security, traffic flow, and classroom spaces. So I was gonna elaborate a little more, but I think you did a great job, council member. And please go out and vote. If you can't do it on the 7th, you can go before, and please support our schools. It was easy, stress-free, it took me a couple minutes. And without telling you who I voted for for the school board, I did vote yes twice on the referendum items. Um, couple things. Um, a while back, um, there was some some discussion in, in, in Richfield about diversity and Black Lives Matter and the impact or the relationship between some of our citizens and our police department. And uh, Council Member Reagan Gonzalez and myself, together with the city manager and, and Chief Henthorne, met with uh, an individual and his wife who had, was having some difficulties trying to see if we could, we could come up with a plan or, or something to try to resolve the problems and, and make him feel more welcome in the community, him and his wife at the same time, um, explained to them that, that uh, the police department is charged with preserving the safety of all its citizens and that may sometimes appear to be that they're, they're targeting or whatever you wanna call it. Um, what I wanna talk about this evening is after that discussion um, through the cooperation of city manager, the police chief and the, and the city prosecuting attorney, um, there were some suggestions made on how to resolve the problems going forward so that, that W the police department isn't put in the uncomfortable situation of having to stop someone who, who they know uh, has some, some sensitivity in regards to interactions with the police department and everything. Long story short, and I don't want to embarrass anybody, but uh, I followed up with the individual over the, the last couple of days, talked with the city prosecutor. Um, I was asked what I could tell him about what was gonna happen in court, and I said that there'd been a lot of discussions between the city attorney and, and his attorney and I kind of laid out what I understood was gonna happen. He called me that afternoon and said, it, it went, he said, it's, a, it's the shortest time I've ever been in a courtroom. It was out, uh, the, 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 everything was just as you said. And I don't take credit for that. I take credit for the city, the city attorney, city manager, and the chief in coordinating those efforts and putting it together. And it, it's not a panacea. It's, it's, it's one husband and wife in the city that, that were having some difficulties. I'm hoping that we don't run into the same difficulties, but the most rewarding thing, Chief, and I don't know if I've told you this yet, but um, I talked to, to, to the citizen uh, yesterday afternoon, and he said that, much to his surprise, uh, a, a plains closer, an officer out of uniform came up and introduced himself as one of the people that was, that was involved the evening where, where the confrontation came up, um, apologized, indicated that, that I've got a duty and explained what his duty was as a public safety officer in the city of Richfield. It was well accepted and, and he said, I've got a friend now. Um, another officer and he who had perhaps a more contentious type relationship also had an opportunity to speak. And he said, I, I would not classify him as my friend, but I understand him and he understands me and we've got a much better relationship going forward. So I think, once again, I don't want to hold that out as exemplary for, for, for what we can do going forward. It's, a, it's, it's one small step in the right direction. And if we keep repeating and keep taking small steps, 
uh, in, not, in the very near future, those problems are gonna be resolved through discussion and, and, and arm's length talks with people that we respect and they respect us. And that I think is, is the aspiration and the goal for the city moving forward, at least in regards to the relationship between the public safety department and our citizens, regardless of color, creed, religion, or anything else. We're all one, we all live here, we're all entitled to the same protection, and I think that, that those feelings are gonna be reciprocated between the citizens of the public safety department going forward, so I think that's just great. Um, another, another item, I'll be quick on this, um, and I guess in full transparency, I was in the Army from 1965 to 1969. Um, either through, through grace of some, something or somebody, uh, I, I never, the closest I ever got to, to Southeast Asia was, was the Hofbrauhaus House in Germany. Um, and and I, I, I don't say that lightly because this past weekend I was, I was asked by my father-in-law to act as his guardian on a honor flight from Madison, Wisconsin to Washington, D.C. I don't know if you're familiar with honor flights. It is a free trip to Washington, D.C. for a day to visit all the, the memorials from the Lincoln and the Washington Monument to the uh, Korean War Memorial, Vietnam Memorial. And it's an opportunity for these vets. Uh, there was two World War II vets, 16 Korean War vets, and 66 uh, Vietnamese vets uh, on the flight. And the, the thing I want to suggest is most of those people, if not all of them, were all frontline soldiers. And they, for the most part, were draftees. They were there because that was their obligation to this nation. They didn't start the wars. They didn't really understand them often. But they, they performed their duty and they went. And they came home to some fairly hostile uh, situations in the United States at, at, during those periods of time. And I can't tell you what it's like to, to go through the Dane County Airport, which is in Madison, Wisconsin, and Madison was uh, honestly a bastion of anti-war sentiment during the Vietnam War. We walked down the concourse going to the plane and that was six o'clock in the morning and people that were there taking their own flight stopped, applauded, shook the hands of all the vets, thanked them for their service and it was legitimate, heartfelt thanks. That was something these people never got when they got back from, from the theater that they were in, whether it was Korea or Vietnam. We got to Washington DC got off at, at Reagan Airport, got the same, the same welcome. People in the concourses lined up thanking them, saluting them, and we had four buses that, that took us to all the memorials through Washington, D.C. We had a police escort, and as you looked out the window, believe it or not, there's people in Washington, D.C. going to and from different, different uh, aspects of their life and everything. Some would stop and salute, some would wave, some would scream, we really appreciate your service. And at every memorial we were at, same thing. Um, on the flight back, all 88 veterans got what was called mail call, and it was a solicitation of, of messages and everything from political figures to family members. And my father-in-law is 85 years old, and I'm sitting next to him on the plane. He gets his mail call, and he opens it up, and he's got, he's got letters from his grandchildren here in their 30s to his great-grandchildren that uh, were two, three, and four years old, a couple of which were my grandchildren who, who scrawled and said, thank you, Papa, for your service and everything. And I had told my wife when I went out, I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I'm on a plane with 88 gentlemen, all 75 years and older, that all turn to the window and start crying. But I, I will tell you, it, was, it had more impact on me than anything I've done probably in the last 20 or 30 years. And, and my father-in-law wanted me to read the letters. He wanted me to share in the pictures. I said, no, this is all about you. And to a person, you got off that plane, the concourse, I don't know if you've been to the Dane County Airport, it's got one concourse that takes you by the baggage area, and it's about 250 yards long. There were 6,000 people there at nine o'clock in the evening with their children and signs and everything. And some were family members, 95% of them weren't. And to watch these guys walk down that, that walk of honor and get congratulated in something. And I said, it's 50 years too late, but, but the appreciation is there. So you know, just, just really bask in it because you guys deserve this in the 50s after the Korean War and also in the 70s when, when Vietnam was winding down. So I, I was so proud that he asked me to, to act as his guardian. I told him, you know, because we were told you gotta stay within arm's length and I said that works only to the bathroom door, then he's on his own. So <laughs> there, there, are, there are rules that I have to keep.
But I, I just wanted to pass that on because if you're ever at an airport or ever have an opportunity to talk, and it's, I'm not advocating war, I'm not advocating anything, but, but these are people that went out and fought our battles for us, and they're entitled to all the respect and the congratulations and thank yous for services you can give them. So just keep that in mind the next time you see a guy wearing a, a VFW cap or whatever because it really, really has some meaning to them. Just coming unannounced, unsolicited from somebody in the street, it, 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 it's much appreciated and you gotta see their eyes light up. They, they're embarrassed about it, but it, it makes them feel, feel really good uh, about being appreciated. So thank you. Thanks, Carol. Thank you, thank you, Mayor, for sharing that because you know, I think we share in how you felt and we appreciate that you, I, that I you let you us can. know about it. It was, it was really, it was, it was very rewarding, mm -hmm. you know, to, just to be there and to sure. see all of that, so. All right, next item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, city manager, consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. Uh, for those here and those in the audience at home, the consent calendar contains several separate items which are acted upon by the city council in one motion. Once the consent calendar has been approved, all those individual items and recommended actions will also have been approved and no further council action on them is necessary. Tonight we start with item A, which is consideration of the approval of a resolution authorizing submission to the local road improvement program for the Lindale Avenue reconstruction project. <coughs> item B is consideration of the approval of an annual request for a temporary on sale intoxicating liquor license for the Church of St. Richard, located at 7540 Penn Avenue South for their 2017 Fall Festival taking place November 11th and 12th, 2017. Item C is consideration of the approval of an annual request for a temporary on sale intoxicating liquor license for St. Nicholas Episcopal Church located at 7227 Penn Avenue South for their Ahoy Mateys event taking place November 4th, 2017. Item D is consideration of the approval of a cooperative agreement for public safety services related to the 2018 National Football League Super Bowl security. Item E is consideration of the approval of the renewal of a contract with Chiefs Towing for the public safety towing services for December 1, 2017 through November 30th, 2018. Item F is consideration of the approval of a resolution calling for a public hearing by the City Council on the proposed adoption of a modification to the redevelopment plan for the Richfield Redevelopment Project area, the modification to the tax increment financing plan for the Cedar Avenue Tax Increment Financing District, and the proposed establishment of a tax increment financing district number 2017-1 housing. And finally, consideration of the approval of a first reading of an ordinance amending residential driveway regulations. And if I could just comment on item G, the final one that I just read. Uh, this is one that came to us from some citizens who have a single car garage and the way the ordinance was previously written, when you, when you had the single car garage, you, you could ha only have a, a driveway that was limited to the, I think like the door frame of the, of the garage. And this um, is going to enable folks who are in that situation to have a wider driveway. So uh, if you have to uh, have another car parked in your driveway, you don't have to move it every time you come in and out of your garage. It's going to allow uh, more flexibility. And uh, there's more people around who are looking at um, uh, getting into some of the homes that have the single car garages, and uh, this addresses a problem that they've been facing. So that concludes the consent calendar. I'll move the consent calendar. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Item six on the agenda has been assigned to Council Member Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a public hearing regarding the annual Lindell Hub Nicollet LHN Maintenance District Assessment. The Lindell Hub Nicollet Maintenance Assessment was established to recover special maintenance expenses in the Lindell Hub Nicollet area in 1981. The current services include maintenance and operation of irrigation, weed control mowing, trash and litter removal, maintenance of street lighting systems. 
the Lindale Hub redevelopment area is approximately bounded by 64th Street, 1st Avenue, 67th Street, and Emerson Avenue. Uh, so this is a public hearing. The city staff has determined that the actual cost of the current services uh, to be assessed for and maintenance for 2018 would be about $50,000. Um, so this is a public hearing if anyone would like to come up and, and testify. Any comments from anyone? We can't hear you. No, it's not. I don't think Holy Angels is included. Is it, Mr. Devich? No. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, okay, if there's not a, if this is not a. Uh, Move no. to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public so, hearing is closed. Um, so I would move that we approve a resolution adopting the assessment of the Lindell Hub Nicollet District for costs incurred to maintain the area for 2016 and approval of a resolution ordering the undertaking of the current service project within the Lindell Hub Nicollet District for 2018. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 The, uh, LHN maintenance district assessment is passed. Item number seven, Council Member Howard. I have a public hearing regarding the annual 77th Street slash ILN project area assessment. The 77th Street ILN project area assessment was established to recover special maintenance expenses in the 77th Street ILN area in 1988. The current services include maintenance and operation of irrigation systems, weed control, mowing, fertilization, trash, and litter removal. Uh, these current services are provided on both sides of the 77th Street wall. The maintenance functions are funded through a maintenance, a maintenance assessment on 77th Street commercial properties. Uh, and this is a public hearing. Is there anyone that would like to speak? Anyone that would like to speak? Move to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing is closed. Council Member Howard. Then I'll make the motion to approve a resolution adopting the assessment on the 77th Street ILN project area for cost incurred to maintain the area for 2016 and to approve a resolution ordering the undertaking of the current services project within the 77th Street ILN project area for 2018. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The ILN project area assessment is passed. Item number eight, Council Member Troutman. Yes, item number eight is a public hearing regarding the assessment for the removal of diseased uh, trees from private property uh, for work ordered in uh, 2016. Um, residents may either remove the trees themselves, uh, hire a contractor, or hire a contractor and request that the cost of the tree removal be assessed against the property tax this is a great benefit for residents that might be struggling cash-wise uh, and not feel the the immediate um, uh, pain of of having to, to pay the cost uh, of a tree. So I think it's a great service that the, the city does. Um, and then in the period uh, between January 1, 2016 and December 31st, 2016, seven property owners uh, chose uh, the third option, uh, that total amount assessed. Uh, was $10,336.69. Uh, um, so this is a public hearing uh, regarding um, approving the resolution adopting this assessment uh, for the removal of the diseased trees. Uh, are there any public uh, comments? Are there any public comments? Going once, going twice. I move close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public hearing is closed. Councilmember Troutman. I would uh, move that we uh, approve the resolution adopting the assessment uh, for removal of diseased trees from private property. Uh, work ordered uh, from January 1, 2016 through December 31, 2016. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The uh, assessment for removal of diseased trees passes. Councilmember Regan Gonzalez. 
The next council item is a public hearing regarding the 2017 alley paving assessment. Paving of the three partial alleys identified for, for improvements in 2017 have been completed. City policy is to assess the adjacent property owners for the cost of the alley paving. At the April 11th, 2017 council, City Council meeting, Council approved a contract with Ron Casa Construction, Inc. for the 2017 alley paving project. The final project cost totaled $39,246.31. This amount, which is less than the engineer's estimate, is used for the actual assessment. So this is a public hearing. Is anybody here, um, would anybody here like to speak? Would any, oh, we do have a couple people to, okay. Could you, you come up to the yep. Could you come up, please, to the microphone? Come and speak and then sign your name. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, but then when I found there was another neighbor of mine here, I was like, okay. Um, we, we got a little bit of the estimate and things. I'm affected, yeah, Blaisdell, the short 67 to 68 block. There are five houses, I think, serviced by the alley. Um, you have to identify yourself and your, sorry, and your address. Catherine Iver, 6736 Blaisdell. Um, and, and yeah, we're both, she and I are both serviced by the alley. We, we got some early kind of estimates and, and indeed it did seem to come in lower than, than what they, um, what they projected. I was accounting for this could cost up to $4,000 and a little bit, a little bit more than half of that. Um, we didn't get a further breakdown. Like what was the actual per square foot assessment? Any idea? Public works director Asher, can you help out? We just got the, this is what you pay. Oh, well, we can we can get you the breakdown. What I have is what you guys have. What I have with me today is what's in the resolution, which is um, it was cost per foot was $40.87. Okay, that's, that's less than what was in the thing. Yes. That was the yeah, only I thing that we, we received. We did get a better deal than we had estimated. So we had the estimate before we hired or found a contractor to do the work. Yeah, that's good. So it was, okay. Four, okay. Okay, 40 and what, sorry? $40.87 per Thank you. foot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is anybody else here to speak on this issue? Okay. Is there a motion to close the public? Actually, I would like to make the motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Before you, you, well, actually, mm -hmm. after you move, I, I was going to read the letter that oh. we received okay. from mm -hmm. the, the so this is uh, in addition to the to the uh, homeowner that spoke. I'm just going to read a, a letter that was sent to the, to the city council through the city clerk. Um, it's re-proposed assessment for paving a city unpaved alleys. Um, please accept this letter as my formal objection to the property assessment at 7345 Fifth Avenue South. While I have no objection to the paving of the alley, I believe it's a public good and will benefit my neighbors who must use the alley to access their garages. I do object to the assessment of my property, 7345 Fifth Avenue, has its own driveway and has no time in my history of owning the house since 2003 ever had a need to use the alley. Seriously, for all I know, there could be a gateway to a hidden dimension with riches beyond my wildest imagination down there, and I'd be none the wiser. It is my belief that as a responsible citizen, I pay for those services from which I benefit, water, sewage, trash, safety, etc. In this particular case, paving this alley has no benefit directly or indirectly to the home. I have pasted the satellite image from Google Maps to show the distinction from my driveway in the alley. Um, I'm going to defer to the to the public works director, but at the same time, um, I, I think it's a little bit narrow interpretation of belonging to a community and living in a city to say I pay for the benefits I receive. You pay for the benefits that are provided throughout the community. And sometimes we have a we have a hard time connecting that benefit to our personal needs, but simp, simp, as a matter of fact, it's you, you live in a community, you share the costs, and that's just uh, just one of them that you have to share. So that's mm -hmm. just my two cents. Well, mayor and council members, and we've had the same policy since we started paving alleys in the 80s. We have countless properties that are in the same situation. I would venture to guess that their trash collection uses the alley and. Uh, in the future, there's no limit. I mean, he could, if you know, or some future property owner could choose to use the alley and not have a driveway the way he has it placed there. But if you just Google map it, I mean, you, it's just one after the other. 
So it's our past pra practice, I guess. I mean, for and there's always that I understand his point of view as well. There's always that chance that mineral rights really well be unimaginable riches. So who knows? <laughs> yeah. Just a, a question for staff that that actually answers one of my questions with how common it is because I mean if somebody has a, an alternate driver they're not using at all in some sense I think they have a strong case and uh, maybe we should look at I'd be open to, to looking at that going forward but my other question was when we had this before us in April is that sort of the time we had a discussion there was a certain yep. um, it seems like that would be the appropriate time to sort of have that discussion not after this is transpired is that that yes that would have been the time to bring it up and that there's a proposed project where you would be assessed and those homeowners did receive notification I mean yes. everybody else seemed to know it was there and came at that time and that's when that th the discussion was that okay right. I just wanted to be clear about on that process but I am open to I think looking forward you could make a, a case or if it's a reduced amount or something for someone that has that limited level of service with it Please. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, the only thing I would, with respect to that, um, we started this in the, uh, gosh, in the 1980s, um, and these have to be some of the very last alleys ever to be paved. The only ones that aren't are the ones we chose not to with this project. Yeah. So in essence, every alley that we were going to pave in the city is pretty much done with these alleys. And um, yeah, you know, um, when you look at a policy like um, the fact that we have consistently over the years uh, charged folks who may not be using the alley at a th particular time, but nothing, you know, again, would preclude them from doing it in the future. I if, you know, when you get deep into a process like this, if you change it, um, I think it has the effect of, of um, making people who are on the front end who, who did pay um, pretty unhappy about it. But again, you know, it's happened many times over the years. I've, I've sat through many of these hearings over the years, and um, there always is some of these that come up. But again, you never know when an alley, an alley's use is gonna change or, uh, or what, you know, what benefit somebody gets from an alley, so. You know, Council Member Howard, I had the same question and I actually spoke to city manager about it because I, I remembered the discussion and it was a half alley that right. nobody, used except the one house on the corner because the driveway went across that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that in addressing that, in, and the city manager reminded me that what we did is we, we took away the assessment. Right, we just didn't do the alley because there was no benefit to, to right. anybody. So. Um, Okay, now with that, I would like to make the motion to approve a resolution adopting the 2017 alley paving assessments. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we passed the 2017 alley paving assessment. Next item is city manager's report. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of city council, I really don't have anything to, to add that would uh, be of a benefit to this meeting. Okay, thank you. Um, claims and payroll. Mr. Mayor, I will move claims and payroll. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There being no further business, this meeting is adjourned.